couple, three members that asked me, oh, look at him, he's going to record it. Like, okay. Then I don't have to do it again. I can just sit back and do my own thing and let y'all watch the recording. Works for me. All right, Joe's here, Bernard's here. Um, Daryl Coachhouse, you here? Ray here, Barrel Bird here, Paul here. A couple of these, few of these guys asked me. Um, I know quite a few people are switching over to Interactive Broker, and uh, as they're as they're getting switched over, they're starting to ask me and PM if I will help them set up the platform just for the basic trading off of it, and uh, that's that's what I'm going to do tonight. Um, I, I'm hoping they're here. I haven't seen a response from Paul yet. And I hadn't seen a response from Daryl Coachhouse, so I guess they're, they're, hopefully they don't mean Okay, good. Um, uh, I, I don't want to go, by, by no means am I 100% an authority on how to use the, the uh, interactive broker trading platform. Um, however, I do know how to set it up and I do know how to use it to accommodate my own personal needs for trading, okay? And, uh, and it's probably going to work at that level for most of you guys and gals in this room also. Um, is it 100% everything? Am I going to show you everything this platform is capable of doing? No. And you know, I was, I was, if you look, at, I've got my uh, simulator open. I'm not going to put my real one up there because I've been playing around with that simulator on and off for the last you know, week or so, um, trying different things to see how they actually, actually work and how they respond in Interactive Broker. And, I'm not going to enter an exit and enter an exit, you know, over and over and over several times in my in my actual trading platform. And I'm not going to use it for a testing ground to see how things actually work. So that, that's what I'm doing here. So if I actually scroll back, there's probably a hundred trades in there for today of some different things that I tried. Oh, there's Daryl from Coach House. Okay, good. Um, to to sign up with interactive brokers, uh, they can you can trade anything with tr uh, interactive brokers from futures to, to forex trades to options to option I mean to future fe uh, future options. Uh, you can trade your stocks. You can trade penny stocks. Anything that's tradable out there is um, is tradable through interactive brokers. A lot of people consider them. Uh, you'll 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 hear people say it's it's the professionals broker. Uh, most of the, a lot of the pros that are retail traders are, are using interactive brokers. Number one, because the executions that you get are, are off the hook. They're they're as good or better than any other broker out there is going to give you. Um, I'm one of those kind that likes to figure things out on my own because, uh, like you know, I like to, I like to be the one that leads the horse to the water, whether or not it drinks. I can't tell you, but I'm not one that's is, is one of those type of people that's going to ask tons of questions of other people because usually once you get your answer it doesn't actually set into your head to what the answer was that you got however if you a lot of you guys and, and I think you guys will find that's the, the general consensus of this room uh, Lloyd pushes it uh, you know, Josh pushes a lot of these guys they push that you guys learn how to be good traders on your own so that you're not just a follower um, and, and it's the same thing with this you know, I've got some buddies that have had interactive brokers for a long time, and, and I could have just asked a bunch of questions and could have got my answers. And whether or not I would have absorbed them would yet to be uh, seen. And so I said, that's not the direction I want to go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play around with this platform until I do figure out how it works, and then I'll understand how it works. So I'm going to show you guys the base. I'm kind of kind of contradicting myself in that I'm showing you guys how to use it. But all I'm really going to show you is the basic stuff so that you can get started and then you're going to have to dig in there a little deeper yourself if there's something you want to do um, other than what I show you tonight uh, yeah you can ask me um, but I'll probably a lot of you guys have already asked me stuff in PM I've told you go to the platform and, and, and study it or try it go to YouTube watch a video call call interactive brokers uh, you know get them I, I'm trying to get these guys involved in, in learning it themselves so that you know they can, you know, kind of, it's kind of like you know, trade. You, you learn how to trade on your own. And you're going to be more successful that way. Well, if you understand how to to work a platform and, and you learn a lot of it on your own, then you're going to re, you're going to, you know, absorb that information and it's going to stay in your in your head. Um, a couple things, interactive brokers. Um, it's a little more expensive to 
to have it. Oh, I apologize. I mean, if I sniff and stuff, <laughs> I got a horrible allergy problem right now. I think I got a sinus infection going on. Because I'm miserable. I just shot up some nasal spray before I got on here, but I apologize. And also, if you hear me hitting my vape pipe, it's not. I'm not smoking a crack pipe. I, I vape. I quit smoking three years ago. So <laughs> that's what's going on there also. Um, like I, what I want to say is interactive brokers, it, it's not for everybody because it does require $10,000 to open an account. Um, so if you, you uh, we got a couple of different levels. Um, if you have a, if you're 21 years old to 25 years old, you can open an account with them for $3,000. Uh, for some reason, that's just something they, they have going. I'm not exactly sure what the, that age has to do with anything, but it is something they do. Um, for everybody else, it's $10,000. So if you want to open an account with interactive brokers, you're going to have a minimum requirement of $10,000 to open that account. Um, they have a little uh, another level, which they consider a premium level, which if you have more than $110,000 in there, they'll give you um, what's called portfolio margin. Um, Portfolio margin is a margin across the board on your portfolio. It, it's not just on, on your cash cash balances that you maintain. If you've got equities or stocks or anything that you're in, um, they'll give you a portfolio margin across the entire thing, across your cash, across your, your positions, everything. So that's something you can get out of them um, if you maintain $110,000 or more in your account. Um, they also do, um, on their commissions, um, they actually give you credits back. A lot of times, you know, their commissions are really cheap. I think some of the guys that have already started using them are finding that out. I believe I saw Daryl, who was in the room today, comment that he was uh, he was already liking the cheap commissions that he was getting out of uh, Interactive Brokers. They're just cheap. I don't know what it is. Um, with my account size, I mean, they're they're just they're they're not costing me anything. So the, the cost of a trade to me is so insignificant. I don't have to factor it into my or my trade at all. Um, and I don't know. I've got I've got to talk to some of you guys that have the ten thousand uh, ten thousand dollar accounts and see if that's consistent across the board with someone that has a ten thousand dollar account um, because I know with my account they're they're cheap and they actually credit me sometimes sometimes I'll make a trade and they'll pay me fifty one cents for doing it I'm like well, it doesn't get any better than that you know they charge me a dollar dollar fifty max on a trade to begin with and sometimes they're paying me to do it so again. It's, it, it's not for everybody. I mean, you, you have to have $10,000 to get into the account and, and open up an account and get to, you know, be able to take advantage of the benefits that go along with, with having a broker like this and, and getting the extremely good and fast executions on your trade. Um, any questions on that part? I'm going to ask you that um, as I'm going here so that I don't have to back up. Um, anybody got any questions on that? Who actually? Oh wait, I already asked that. I was gonna say, who actually here? We got Joe, we got Daryl. It's about six of y'all here. That's good. All right, let's talk about the the platform itself. If you guys will look on your screen, I am doing a screen share, and so if you grab the little dots, um, there's not a whole lot being said in the room. Uh, so if you'll if you'll grab the little orange dots about in the middle of your screen by that down arrow, that will allow you to pull that down. Uh, in the in the forum, so that the the actual screen sharing that I have going on is, is much larger. Okay, there's not be not much being said, so you're not missing anything uh, as far as conversation in the room. So if you want to stretch that thing down quite a bit, because I'm going to be move, uh, navigating around and moving around on it a lot, and sometimes you may not see what I'm doing because my my pointer arrow will go off of your screen. So the larger you make that, the better, the more beneficial it's going to be to you as I'm going around. And all right. As a default, I believe they give you um, the, the the basic stuff of the order entry, which is up on the left side here, right here in this area. That's where your order entry is. Okay. And then underneath that, I if I can remember right, I've had this thing for so long, I got to kind of guess at some of this. I believe they give you this monitor and, and favorites and watch list. You can add additional watch lists. I'll show you how to do that here in a second. Um, do you, does everybody have their platform open? Let's make sure you guys are open and running. For those of you that have this platform, are you open? You got it ready to go to where when I show you how to start adding stuff here, you're good to go? Okay. Um, the first thing you want to do, go up here to the right hand corner, uh, right next to where you would enter a ticker, and there's a little lock right there, okay? Hit that lock and unlock your layout, okay? What that's going to do is it's going to allow you to make changes inside of here internally in the platform. 
What I have is there's two types they have going. They have what's called a classic TWS. I don't use it. Don't particularly care for it. And then they have a mosaic. The one you're looking at right here is the mosaic. That's the one I use. That's the one I'm going to be covering tonight and showing you how to set up. So if you'll go down to your bottom left corner, click on mosaic. And you're not going to have all this stuff in there. Not right now, but we're, we're going to have it in there in a minute. Go to the top right and, and unlock your layout. And that's going to allow you to put stuff in. All right. I got three columns shown here, a left side, a center, and a right side. On the left side here, after the stuff they give you default, this next little box that I have gives you the, the close, open and close, open high, close, and low for each day. Um, if you go into, I'm not sure it may give you that one for default all sometimes. So, no, there it is. Okay. Go up to the very top where it says new window. I'm going to go ahead and cover them even. I'm not sure what they give you as a default been so long since I've had this thing. Some of these things they give you, I know the stuff in the center here, I don't think they give you any of it at the top part. Um, click on the, on the top left, click on the new window and go down to um, price history and click on that. Okay, mine is not going to come up because I already have it. Okay, and it's going to open this box right here. Now this box is going to allow me to move it around because I have my, my setup unlocked right now. Okay, so what it's probably going to do with yours is it's going to just throw it somewhere in the middle of your screen like that. Okay, you can take this box and you can move it over to, if you want to set yours up identical to mine, that way in the future if we're discussing something about this platform, I, I will know that your layout is the same as mine. Um, you can go in after the fact and tweak it, you know, it'll be different if you want to, but initially you'll have the same layout as I have. You can grab these boxes, you can put them in place, you can grab the edges of them, that green line, you can you can stretch them out, you can make them smaller, you can do whatever you want. You get that one put in there, and that's going to be your first box that you're going to add in there, and that is your um, price history. That's giving you the, the date, the open, the high, the low, the close, and the volume for the last five days. Okay. Oftentimes in the room you'll see someone, well, you're going to say, well, what do I need that one for? Oftentimes in the room you'll see someone say, hey, we're, 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 uh, we're lower than yesterday's close, or we're or higher than yesterday's high. Um, when you see those kind of statements made, if they're, if they're of any value to you, you can right away look over at this thing right here, and you can see what, you know, the 18th was Friday. You can see what the high, what the high, the low, and the open and close were on the ES. In this particular case, I, I have a ES going right now. So it would allow you, when somebody says, hey, we're, 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 we're trading below you know, Friday's close, you know, I can quickly go over here and see that on the ES, Friday's close was 1950.62. Okay, so it gives me a quick reference point to something someone may have said or even something I may want to know on my own. I may want to say, I wonder if we're trading higher or lower than where we closed on Friday. I, I now have that you know, accessible to me. All right. Any questions on that box? Y'all get that box in there if you want that box. We're going to move on to the next one. I don't want to get, I don't want to get going here and then have somebody stop and say, hey, I didn't catch how you put those things in there. I didn't this or I didn't that. I don't want to get that we will get too far into it. So if, if I'm going to glance down to form, if, if I get too far, y'all stop me. Okay, the next one, the next box that is in here is, is time and sales. I'm going to pull it out of there. There's my next box that I have on the left side. That's my time and sales box. And, and keep in mind, <clears throat> all of these boxes that we put in here are going to be conducive to whatever you're watching at the time, whether it's the ES futures or whether it's the CL crude light or futures, or if you're if you're trading Apple, um, if you're trading Amazon, doesn't matter. Facebook, whatever ticker you put in here to watch, all these things are going to become uh, live streaming, active, you know, uh, real time uh, items that are associated with the stock that you pick or the or the future that you pick. If you're, if you're watching Apple, it's going to give you time and sales on Apple. Okay, so this little one here, if you go into to get it, let's drag it back into its spot. If you will go into the new window and go on down to time and sales, uh, all you're going to see it do is blink mine because all I already have it. That's what will put that box in. All right. Next box on the left side, very bottom. And right now I've got the ES Mini uh, uh, S&P Mini future, Futures running, so you'll be able to see that. Uh, you know, some of this stuff's kind of blinking and, you know, numbers are changing and stuff. It's because I'm actually running the ES right now. Uh, 
So you will see some of it change. It's not changing much. It's kind of boring. I actually tried to goof around with it a little bit. And wanted to test some different types of setups and stuff, and I couldn't. It wouldn't move enough for me to even test anything. You can see in my trade confirmation box here that you know, I had a whole bunch going on, but geez, it took forever to get anything to happen. All right, bottom left corner is, is um, what most of you guys understand as being level two. Um, I'm going to pull that one out of there. Okay, this one, if you go into new window, uh, you can go in there, and it is the one that says market depth, level two. Okay, click on it. It's going to give you that box. Size it so that it'll fit in there. And I've got this thing on a full screen, so you know if you guys do the same thing, if you fill up an entire screen with your trading platform here, then you'll be able to you know resize each one of these boxes so that it fits into that full screen view. All right, so that that's that's what you guys understand as being level two, just like everything else. The bid, the bid and the ask. What's going on with the market makers? Where where where's the bids? Where's the ask? You, know, you start seeing people saying, "Oh, they're stacking the ask, or they're stacking the bid, or blah blah blah." You know that you know that the common terminology. You'll be able to see if any of that's really going on. In this particular case, like right now, we can look at we can look at the 1958 um, on the ES has got 432 on the, on the bid side. 432 on the bid side. You know, so all that's right there. There's your level two. You can see what's going on. Obviously, there's a, a lot more stacked up on the, the the bid side here than there is over on the ask, but even at night with the futures, just like uh, during the day with stocks and stuff, they, they play some games. You know, market makers will lay some stuff out there that doesn't really exist. You know, and you'll be sitting there watching it. It'll show 437 on the ask, I mean on the bid on the 1958. All of a sudden that'll be gone. You're like, well, where'd it go? There's not enough volume at night to uh, on the ES futures trading to absorb 437 contracts. You know, so they, you got to take it for what it's worth. They play some of the same games. That you guys see during the day, especially if you trade penny stocks, you see a whole lot of that going on. All right. Any questions on that left side? Got your order entry box up at the top. Got your favorites and your watch lists right underneath it. Got your close closings uh, box right underneath that, where the where the whatever you're looking at closed. High days in a row, open, high, low, close, volume. You got your time and sales box right underneath it, and you got your market depth or level two right underneath it. Everybody good on that one? I guess if I don't get any responses, that means I'm 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 okay. I'm good. You guys are all understanding. All right, let's go to the middle here. This one's a, a default here. This first one, which is your portfolio, that's going to and ultimately show what you're in. Okay. Um, I guess just for just for the fun of it, let's let's get in something real quick. Let's get in the ES. Um, somebody, some you guys got charts. I got some charts up. Look at your charts. Um, look, let's let's get in a position so that this is going while we're talking here. Um, on the ES, look at your charts. Somebody toss out there if we want to go long or short on it. I'm gonna do. I'll just do one contract. Got that already set. Somebody toss out there, and you're not gonna be held responsible for it. So don't feel like you can make a call and then everybody's going to go, oh, did you see what Daryl did or Joe did the other night? He's wrong. Nobody cares. Actually, you're, you're, the, you're, you're the bold one if you're willing to toss out something and say, hey, Moto, go, go long one contract on ES here and see what happens. All right, so we all got short. Let's go short. All right, well, I don't know that's it's going to fill me short, but yes, it did. 1959, it filled me. Okay, I did that real quick, but we'll get to how I did that here in a second. All right, as of right now, if you look at our, um, our monitor up here at the top, our portfolio, it shows that I have a, a one short position, a negative one, one short position that we got into at 1959, and that's what's actually active right now. It's going on in here as we speak. Okay, so let's let's keep an eye on it, see what it does. This is your um, your trading window. The next box down is your trading window. This is where you um, you try to execute your trades, and uh, this is where you're going to try to to get your fills and then they'll move up to your portfolio once they're filled. You can make adjustments in here once you set a trade in place, um, but I don't do it in here. I do it over here on the ladder. We'll get to that here in a second. Okay. Um, that should be in their default. If I'm pretty sure it is. Quote detail. Okay. If it's not, click on quote to go to new window top left. Click on quote, quote detail. 
and it should pop that one open. Well, that, that one's in there. All right, next one coming down is where you, the next box coming down is, is where you're going to build your, your, your different strategies for options. Um, let's go here, and you can click on Strategy Builder, go into a new window, top left, go down to the fourth one that says Strategy Builder, click on it, and it's going to put this box in here. I'll move it out of the way so that you can see it. You want to get that box as your third one down in the center column. Get that box put in there, resize it so it fits. This is where you're going to build your um, your different legs for different strategies that you want to do on options. Okay. Very bottom box on this particular center column here. Go to new window. And go down to option change. About five, about seven of them down. Option window. Go under quotes. Go to option change. Click on option change, and then this box is going to fill in. So again, move these things around, size them so that they all fit in here. Each one you can grab from the side, the top, the bottom, whatever, and move them around, change the size on them. And then I'm going to put this one back in place. All right, so what do we got here? We got a portfolio that shows us any trades that we were in, or are in currently, up at the top. Um, next one is our activity. It shows orders, trades that you already have made, and then a summary of what's going on. Um, as you can see, like I said, I've been playing with this thing quite a bit today. And there's a whole bunch of trades in there. So let me grab it. And then orders. This shows my current order. There's the most recent. You can go to this little all button here if you want to. On the second box down, you click on activity. You can go to all here and you can clean that up. If you want it to show all your orders that you've done for the day, you can have that in there. If you want it to just show you what's live, you can click it to live and it'll show you what you actually have going on right now that you're trying to get filled. In this particular case, I don't anyway. Um, you can show all canceled orders and you can show completed orders. Okay, so you got you got four different choices there. Now here's all the ones that I, I, I goofed around with, tried to get filled and then canceled. And then here's ones that are completed. Quite a few of those also. I'm going to click mine back to all orders. Um, okay, uh, net below that you've got your, your box uh, strategy builder box that you build your legs for your different uh, options in. And then the final one underneath that is the options chain. All right, any questions on the center column? Where is the activity window? Where's the activity window? I believe that one is called... I thought that was pretty. That didn't come as a default. Uh, quote details. Back to that. Too. Click on click on quote details. No, nope, that's not it. That's, that's giving me a new window. I thought that was a default. Time and sell. No price history. No. Order entry. There it is. No. Nope. Uh, going. Hang on. It's been so long since I actually built this. I don't know what comes as a default and what you have to add. Order management. Try try a couple of these top ones, Joe. Order entry, order management. I know strategy builder is my, my second one up, and I know options change my bottom one. Um, it's right here. Try uh, order entry, see if that gives it to you. Or order management. Or order management is probably going to give it to you. Order management, orders. Yep, that's it. Go down to order management, go over to orders, click on it, and it should give you that box. Yeah, there it is. You get it? Top left. Looks like Paul helped you on that one. Go to order entry or order management. Sorry. Order management, orders, and it'll give you a box. Get it put as your second one down. All right. The last thing I have on the final right hand side here is what they call it's it, it's referred to as a dome, the DOM. It's a trading ladder. Oftentimes in the room you'll see people reference the word ladder. This is what they're talking about. Um, a lot of futures traders use them. I know Lloyd uses a chart. He Lloyd and I believe Mark does also. Um, 
they enter their trades from a from a chart. I actually enter mine from a ladder. Um, I, I like the domes. I like the ladders. I like to be able to trade from it. Um, I, hope, I, I like the domes. I like the ladders. I like to be able to trade from it. Um, I hope we enter the trade. I don't know what we enter. But, you, but yeah, it's, it's not moving. That's for sure. <laughs> We're still right there at 1958.50. So. Guys are probably doing better in here than if you were trying to trade op or uh, ES futures right now. They aren't going anywhere. All right, how do I get this ladder on the right hand side over here? Go up into your new window. Go all the way to the bottom here. And you'll see one that says Book Trader. Okay? Click on that. And that's going to put that ladder in there. Resize that thing. Get it to fit. All right, everybody have everything in there that is the same as what mine is so far? We're good to go? Okay, good. Now, go up to the top right again and relock your layout. That keeps you from moving stuff around by mistake or clicking on something by mistake. Um, and once you lock the layout, it's locked. You can't, you can't move any of this stuff. That kind of keeps you out of trouble is what it does. Um, a few things I want to show you. I had someone ask me, and I, I'm, it may have been you, Paul. I think you said that you were you were using the interactive brokers platform, but you had to use Thinkorswim for alerts. Um, you can actually do your alerts from here. Go to the, go to new window and click on chart. Okay, click on chart, chart, the full size chart. Go up to new window. Up there you go. New window chart, go over the chart, click on that, it's going to open you up a chart, okay, in this particular case, it's going to open up my ES chart, um, but it could be anything, it could be Apple, it could be ES, it doesn't matter, if in the body of that chart, hit your right click, okay, right click your mouse, it's going to give you some different options that you can do, things that you can do inside, and if you go to the very top right, you see the little bell? That little bell icon, click on that, and that one says create alert. And in this particular case, if I wanted to get alerted at 1965, I can click on 1965, and then it's telling me, okay, the underline is ES, the exchange is Globex, subscription is December 15th, uh, expiration uh, on the futures, method is the default, and it's uh, I'm telling it alert me at 1965. Okay, now I can manually change that to whatever I want it to be right here real quick if I wanted. If I wanted to know when, when it gets to 1967, I can change that to 67. And then I can hit the activate bus button right here. Once I hit that activate button, now I've created an alert for that to tell me. Is that what you were looking for? When you told me that you had to, you could trade from IB, but you had to do your, set your alerts in, in Thinkorswim? Is this what you were trying to accomplish? See how I did that? Okay, good. So you can do that here. Again, a real quick new window, chart, click on chart, go put it up. And and again, if you wanted, if you want this to say you decide, I don't I don't want time and sales or I don't want the um, the level two say you decide you don't want it, either one of those in there um, you can if you decide hey I want this chart in there and I want to be able to set my alerts you know I can resize this box if I want to so that it becomes a box that would fit into one of these other um, zones or areas that if I decide hey say you decided you didn't want the, the time and sales because you didn't think it did anything for you you can X out the time and sales, get rid of it, and put this one in there. To put it in there, you've got to unlock your layout again. Don't forget. You unlock your layout, and then you put that chart in there. Oh, mine went. Let's do another one real quick. Put that chart in there. I'm going to resize this thing. Now my layout's unlocked. So if I, if I, if I were to resize this thing and X out my time and sales, say you decide you don't want time and sales, so you don't care to have the the box that is you know showing the close and opens from the previous day, then put your chart in there, stretch it out, 
to the size that you want, X out the one underneath it, and then relock your relock your um, platform, and now that chart one is in there. And then, then this one, this is where each time you can, you don't even have to click on it and click the bell, because now it shows an alert, a buy, and a sell at the top. You can actually click on alert. And, and uh, well, no, I've still got to set it. Go in here and hit the bell. In this this case, it doesn't do, it's not going to work as good because you don't have a very big chart. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock and get rid of that thing. I don't use it. It's gone. So relock the thing again. But now, now you, you know how to do it, right? All right, next thing. What are we going to do here? Um, so that's how you set up your alerts. Um, you can do, there's several ways to enter orders. You can go up here to the top left into the order entry window. Um, I don't use it. Uh, I use the, the ladder for everything I do. What did we get in that trade? 1959.25? Still hasn't done anything, has it? Oh, wait, no. What did we get in? We got, what did we get in that thing at? 1958, 1959. Hey, we're up to six. Yeah, we got in 1959. Average price right here in the middle. We got in 1959. It's showing 1958.95. It's actually 1959. It's up 1959.75. We took a long position there. Um, Here's what I can do over here. On the top of this ladder here, very top left, there's a little box that's checked that says armed. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck those. There's also on the right, right over here, on that same ladder, there's another box that says armed. I'm going to uncheck that one. Okay. So now whenever, if let's say, okay, we got in at 1959. Say we want to get out at 1960. Um, we went green side is long, red side is short. And when you're trading uh, futures, you guys know you can trade. You know, no pattern day trade rules. You can trade all day long, long or short, whichever one you choose to do. Um, so in this particular case, we're long. One contract at 1959. If I decided to get out of that, I can click on that, but it's going to ask. Okay? And any guys and gals that trade futures know that uh, so oftentimes when you're trading ES or CL, seconds count. You know, uh, if you guys are trading these during the day, Sometimes a one-minute chart can actually be long. Let's see. I tried to see if we have quick charts. Seems like uh, no go so far. Is that good? Sure. Have not. I, I don't use their charting at all, Paul. Um, oh wait, you're right. Sorry about that, Daryl. We're we're short. Sorry about that. <laughs> I was thinking we were long. Yeah, go up to our position here. We're we're short. Well, who who called this thing? Who got us in this short position? <laughs> no. Nah. All right, we're short. We're not long on this thing. Okay, let's go back to where I was here. Okay, so let, let's say we're we were short at 19, 1959. Um, you guys wanted to get in short. Let's say we wanted to take our profit at 1958. So we go over here and click on the long thing. And like I was saying, you know, seconds can count sometimes when you're trading futures. So in this particular case, it's asking me for confirmation, wanting me to to review this and say okay. You know, you got one contract, you know, you want, you really want to transmit this and blah, 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 and you can tell it, don't show me this at the end, but it's still going to show it. So to get rid of that, to um, what will happen here is if you hit, go back up to the little square on the right-hand side of your ladder and rearm. I'm going to rearm mine. And what it's going to do, I <laughs> was losing 50 cents, wonder who, but yeah, who got us in this trade? That's okay because I use the stock and stuff. When you hit that that first armed button and check that, it's going to give you a warning. Basically, what it's saying is, okay, you know, up to this point, we've babysat your trades, we've we've got made you give us confirmation, we've asked you to verify, we've this, we've that, and um, you're now telling us, don't do that anymore. I'm a big boy, I can trade on my own. I'm a big girl, I can trade on my own. Uh, don't warn me, don't ask me, just leave me alone and let me trade. So you tell them one time, yes, I've read this, I, I understand your warnings, now go away. Okay? So I'm going to now go to back to the top left corner and arm it there also. Okay, so now what we've told it, I'm going to get rid of these real quick because we were all going to run up here. Um, so now what we've told this trading platform, Interactive Brokers, is we don't need any help. We know what we're doing. I can trade on my own, execute my trades instantaneously, and just do it when I ask you. Okay, so that's what I've done here 
by arming this ladder, okay, the dome. I've told them I got full control of it. I take full responsibility for it. I want you to execute my stuff quickly, and, and that's it. Okay, so that that's what you're doing when you arm yourself here. So in this particular case, now we, we got in at uh, 1959. Ultimately, we wanted to get out. Let's see, set the good ashes up. I'm calling for me. Would you set that up somewhere? Found. It. Yes. Go, uh, yeah, you can go into configure. I can show you how to do that. If I see that you found it, but for everybody else, go into configure. There's a little wrench right up here at the top right. Okay. You'll go into that little wrench and click on it. It's going to allow you to configure either the settings or the actual font size. In this case, I'll put settings. I don't want to get too carried away in here. Um, if you go down here about halfway down, you'll see where it says book trader colors. Okay. If you'll go into your book trader colors, you can set that stuff for whatever you want. Book trader sounds you can set. Book trader colors. This will allow you to set the ask column at, at red, um, the bid column at green. Uh, if you look on here uh, in the center column of my price, whenever you see a light green price, that's going to show that's where the bid there just popped up. See that? Well, I thought that's the way. Oh, no, you guys can see it. When that little light green price show, shows up, that's the bid. Um, when you see a, a red price show up here in the center, that's the ask. Um, the dark blue one was the last. That was the last traded price. And then in this particular case, the low and the high of the day I have set on mine is red. And you can change all that to any, anything you want, any color you want. But the actual low of the night for the ES is right here. Um, it's set in red on mine. That's where you trade and do all that stuff. Go back out of that. Go back to it one more time. Go to the very top right. The blue little press monkey wrench looking thing. Um, so if you click over it, it says configure. Click on it. And you can configure, set the configure settings the configured font. I'll click back on settings again. It's going to open that box back up. This is where there's several things you can do. Um, you can, we'll get into looking at hot keys and stuff. Order columns. You can define which columns you want on that ladder. Uh, trade columns. You can define that. Book trader colors. You can set your colors and then the sounds. You can set your sounds. Alright, so in this particular case, um, we got in 1959. We went in short, didn't we? Where do you want to get out? Somebody post. Where are we going to get out of this? Thing? Where, where, what are we going to try to get? Are you still want to stay short? Um, let me see. There's a way to do that. Go into configure settings. And You don't like the auto reset it? It kind of lags it, doesn't it? I leave it on. If there's a way to turn it off, it's in here. Full panel. Over settings. Yeah, it lags it a little bit. It's not bad. Like we've seen it there, someone would ask me, so I might have to go find it. It's, it's in your settings here. There is a way to do it because I actually did it myself and then I changed it back because I actually liked it. I don't know. I'd have to go back in again. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost positive you do it in the little wrench, one of the settings. It's, it's somewhere in here. Again, it's one of those things. If you mess around in here, you'll find it. You'll click open one of these windows, it'll pop open and look at settings. Scroll down. Maybe right in there. Uh, recenter, last price, uh, midpoint. All right. Uh, there, it, it shows the recenter right there, but I got to figure out now how to turn it off. <laughs> you go into the settings, go into configure settings, and it shows the recenter. And somewhere in here, I would imagine it allows you to turn it off. Countdown scrolling. Last price, where you go up here. I mean, it allows you to do it on last price, mid, mid or bid ask, and not ask. It's 
10 rows, so somewhere in there I'm sure it allows you to turn it off. It does, but I remember turning mine off. But right now I don't know where it went. These are the little detail stuff you get to go find. Let's see, it, re, detail, let's see, what did you say it is? Settings, display, display, uh, auto scroll. I don't see auto scroll in there. Comes in the settings. Auto scroll. I don't see it in there. Where'd you get it from, Daryl? You're in settings. Display. I'm in, I'm in settings. Display. Are you clicking on settings again once you're in display? Anyway, you guys can find that. It's in the settings part somewhere. Stop it. Count down from center. Yeah, where are you finding? You're in display. Okay, I'm in display. Settings display. Where are you, where are you finding the auto scroll? If I click on the display button here, you can see I got a display button I've clicked on. Slip, click on settings, and where you, where you find in the auto scroll. Go back to the first screen. Okay, so I'm gonna click on display. There we go. Go back. Go back. Okay, hang on a second. Let's get out of that. Go back to configuration settings. All right, back to that one. It's as far back as it goes. Scroll down, okay. We're about to get our answer here. <laughs> Scroll down. Yeah, I'm watching on main. <laughs> what am I looking for? There's about 40 things in there. Okay, Joe, Joe found it. Right side scroll. Okay. Oh, there it is. You talking about the little bo box that's checked that says display auto scroll countdown after scrolling? All right, there it is. All right, he found it for us. Good job. Thanks, Daryl. Appreciate it. <laughs> I don't know where we were. <laughs> so there it is. Click on your configure on your settings. Go down to the, on the main one there. Scroll down here. There's a little bar on the right. It's not showing everything. Scroll down to the bottom. And where it says display auto scroll, it, it does lag it a little bit. I mean, I'll give it that. It's not too bad. Um, you can move it manually. So that helps. Uh, oftentimes, I'll hit it and recenter myself real quickly. And usually, I'm, I'm so programmed to do that on that ladder. I hit recenter so often that it, it recenters before this thing has a chance to try to auto recenter. Because, like you said, it does lag it a little bit. It, it goes through this little recentering process and it shows a little blue box at the top where it's recentering. And depending on how quickly something's moving, you know, it could get you in a little trouble. Um, so, like I said, I recenter mine all the time. If it starts to go too far to the bottom, too far to the top, it, it, it's set for 10. It's set for 10 lines. If you remember when we were in that settings, it's set for 10. So, it actually has to go out of the center 10 lines before it'll recenter myself. I mean, it, itself. Um, you can change that 10 to whatever you want. That was far enough out for me to continually recenter it real quick for myself. So I can beat it to it every time. That makes sense? All right, what do we want to do next? Um, all right, we're in 1960. We're short, right? It's not working. We're in 1959. We're down a point. I didn't start from zero, so obviously we lost a point. It should be 50 bucks. Um, where do you guys want to stop out of this thing? Or you want to, or, or we got it in 1959. We want to. We want to. We want to win at 1958. But we're not going that direction. All right. So all I did there. Let me show you some things here. Um, all I did there is uh, we got in at 1959. Way back here. Okay. What I did is I dropped down one point and I clicked on the bid bid side. Um, I'm going to cancel those. 
So once I've made my entry of 1960, there's a couple things we can do here and a couple different ways we can do it. Um, say I made my 1959 entry and, and I wanted to get out at, at 1958. All I've got to do is click on that. On that um, we're in short, so we're in 1959 short. It's going against it right now. But say I wanted one point, all I've got to do is click on the, on the bid side here where I want to get out. And in this case, say it was 1958, I wanted to try to get one point out of it. That would be where I'd get out. Now, I can sit here and watch this thing, and during the day, it's really active. Right now, it's really boring. It's not moving at all. But I can actually grab that blue line. You see that blue line? If you guys, you're going to have to scroll over in the forum to be able to see where I'm at. Because we're not, we're on the last column now on the ladder. So slide your little slider bars in there. Yes, I can set a stop on that. I'm going to show you how here in a second. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. So right, right now, if you'll look at that, my blue line here is, is my, my uh, limit for my exit. That's where I want to get out and take my profits. Okay. Um, in this particular case, it's going against us, but that's okay. Um, we're using it for reference purposes. So I'm going I'm to go ahead and cancel that so I can show you again. It's going to get rid of that blue line. So if this is where I wanted to get out, 1958, on the short, all I got to do is click that and that blue line shows up. And if you look in my activity box over here, it's showing up as an ES December 18th, 2015. I want to buy that thing at 1958, one contract. So basically all I'm doing is, is getting rid of my position that I'm in by doing that. Um, and then if I decide, hey, um, I don't want to take any more pain on this thing than 1961, what I do is I go uh, to 1961 up above on the bid side and I right click that thing okay if you'll, you'll look what I did is, is I right clicked on it and if you look in my activity thing now it shows a ES December 18 buy stop at 1961 okay so essentially what I've done here is I've told it real quickly and you can do this really fast when you get used to it you get good at it so let me cancel those real quick so all I've got to do is we're in at 1959 I say I want to get out 1958. I want to stop at 1961. I set it. I just set both of those that quick. Okay. So what I've told it is, give me my profits in 1958 and stop me out at 1961. Let me get you guys. Can you appreciate the switching targets? I'm going to stop. I buy one. Yeah. That's a little complicated, so I don't know that I want to go into that yet tonight. Um, yes, I'll show you how. Now I'm not I'm not going to get real carried away with the with the um, multiple positions to where that's just going to confuse people to where I buy ten contracts and, and then I want to sell out three the first time and I want to sell out three the second time and then I want to get rid of four. Um, I don't want to go there tonight not yet because I wanted to show like I said when I started just the basic stuff so that you can get started. Um, but I'm going to show you I'll show you a couple ways to do what I'm doing right here. I'm going to cancel those again. Did, did y'all follow me how I did that? Uh, we got a 1959 entry. That was right here. Okay. We want to set our, our limit exit on the trade. All I got to do is left click on the bid side, the green, and it creates this up here where it says I want to buy at 1958. Um, I was looking to see this trade map. It's still a lot worse off by 75 cents. Okay, and then if I want to set my stop in answer to Julie's question, I will go to the 1961 right here, go over to the left side on the bid column, and right-click my mouse, and that will set my stop. Okay, so what I've done, done is I've said, okay, we entered in 1959. and 1958, that's where I want to exit and take profit. At 1961, I want to stop out. get the order panel. Okay, are you armed? Um, when you get that order panel, it's going to um, it's going to ask you, it's telling you that, I, I can't get it to show mine, um, it's telling you that you're, you're setting a, a position that exceeds the margin requirements or something in there, um, up that amount. It, it's, it's by default, it's just, I don't remember how many contracts it is by default, but go in there and change that. Um, when it gives you that little box, change the default in there uh, to maybe 10 or 15 contracts, and then it should stop asking for that. Because it's set up for a default right now. Change that so it'll quit asking you. 
right, Julie, did you catch? Do you understand how I did this here, where I got my 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 entry? Obviously, the the, the I'm going to go ahead and close this position. You got a couple options up at the top here. You can close position, you can reverse the position, or you can view the account. I'm going to just close it. It didn't work obviously as a as a long position. I mean a short position. And I want to show you the opposite way of doing it. So let's decide we let's say we want to go long here. I'm not looking at a chart or anything, so I'm not making this decision based on anything of any concrete value. I'm just using the chart to show you, I mean the setup to show you how to make the entry. Okay. So I'm going to push it to 1959.75. And if you'll look at my activity thing here, my activity box, it shows that I'm trying to buy one coin, con one contract, but it doesn't show it filled yet. Okay? And that's at uh, 1959.75. It hasn't filled me. Now, i got a couple options here. So let's say it's during the day and this thing's really moving along good. Okay? I can grab this little blue bar here. See this little blue bar that it created to try to get me to fill? Let's say it's it's it's... On the chart, I wanted to go long, but it's, it's got a candle that it's creating a wick on that it's dipping a little bit, and I want to get away from it. All I have to, oh, good. So I can move it. Okay. What I was going to show you is I can actually, I'm going to close that just to show you again. That's why there's so many different trades on here. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try that again. I'm going to start it over. It filled it real quick when I was going to move it. Let's go back here. I like that stuff clear off my screen. Let's, we want a 1959.75. Let's say it's during the day and it's coming toward you. I can grab this little blue bar and I can drag it down. Okay? I can drag it all the way down to here. If, if, if say, you decide, hey, I'm bullish on the thing, on ES, um, I want to enter a long position, and you're, you're trying to get in, but all of a sudden it starts to drop a wick on a candle, and you're like, well, I want to get a better fill on this thing. It's going to dip a wick real quick. I don't want to fill at the trading line. So I can grab this little blue bar and I can move it around, okay? And as you'll see in the, in the up here in the activity feed box, it's changing it as I move it, okay? So if the thing were, if the axle were moving, which it's not, it's growing mold tonight. Um, if we're actually coming down and I was looking at the chart and I decided I want to be long on this thing, um, you know, and it was moving with some, some decent speed to it, then I could pull it away. I could say I still want to be long, but I want to get the absolute best entry I can get I keep pulling this thing away, pulling it away, and it's dipping a candle. And then what may happen is it may actually start to go long. So then as you see it on the trading line getting away from you here, you say, okay, I, I tried to find the ultimate bottom and I missed it. Uh, now it's running away from me. Now you can push that thing up there, you know, maybe one tick above it and get it to fill instantly for you. So, you know, it allows you to quickly be able to manipulate your, your entry on your position so that you can... <coughs> You know, pretty much optimize your, your entry if you've got you know several monitors like I do and you have a bunch of charts running at the same time. You know, it allows you to, to pull away from it and pull away from it and while it's dipping a candle. You know, it, may, it may be long, the overall trend may be long and bullish, but you want to get the best entry that you can. And so you're pulling away and pulling away and you say, okay, you know, so so say you get filled, let's go up here and get filled real quick. It's gonna take the nineteen sixty to get filled. Okay, so now I'm filled. All right, so we're back in again. This time we're in long. If you go up to my monitor up here on the top middle column, it shows that we're long one position 1960. Okay, we got entered at 1960. So now we can manually say, okay, I want to I want to set um, uh, an exit on this thing at 1961. So I go over to the right side, the, the app side, and I just click regular click on 1961, and as you can see, that's one point in the activity box it shows up as a cell, as a limit cell. That's where I would exit the trade with my profit. Okay? Now, if I want to say, okay, I don't use stops um, because when I'm in a trade, I watch the trade. I don't go off and eat lunch. I know I, I get a little frustrated when I see it in the forums of these guys that go, oh, geez, I went to the gym and came back and I'm up $29,000. Okay, sure you are. Um, I'm not one of those that makes money by mistake, like a lot of people seem to think they do in the rooms, and they say, oh, I went and ate lunch, I got back, and, you know, I, I, it hit my stop, or it hit my limit, and, I, you know, I made 1500 bucks. Okay. I sit and watch my trades, so for that reason, I don't necessarily need a, a stop. If it's going to go crazy and get away from me quick, I'll get out of it quick. You know, so I, I don't, I don't play, play around with a whole lot of stops, although I know a lot of you guys, I don't want to preach that as being the way to trade, because I know a lot of you guys have to. 
uh, because you may not be disciplined enough to not use them. So in, in this particular case, um, we'll go back here. We entered at 1960. Again, we said 1961. I will regular left click on the, on the 1961. That's going to be my exit for profit. And then if, if you're one of those that has to trade with a stop, I'm going to go down on the ask side to the 1959 and right click. And then you can see that in our activity box, it added that as my sell stop. Okay, so right now I'm sitting with this position. We entered at 1960 long. At 1961, we, um, we, we have a, a limit sell to get out of the exit for trade. And at 1959, we have a stop. All right, here's the big question that everybody wants to know, and nobody could ever get an answer. And I finally figured it out on my own. Everybody says, how do you set this up to be an order cancels order? And that was the most frustrating thing to try to figure out. Um, this ladder will not, as as I enter this, okay, let me show you guys something. It's starting to move just a little bit here. So what I can do is, that, let's say we decide, hey, you know, it's coming up our way. I want to go higher than 1961. I want to go 1961.50. All I got to do is grab that blue line and push it. Okay, see so, you how know, I push that to 1961.50 on our, our limit exit out of that trade. Um, if you go over here to my activity thing, it, uh, it shows that we're now, you know, moved up to 1961.50. And the flip side of that is I could push my stop also. You know, I could push my stop up a little closer. You know, so I, as this thing's moving, I can be pushing away from it. Push my stop up, and at some point, um, you know, it will it will allow me to um, get that stop to break even on this thing. It's actually getting pretty close. Push it right there. Okay, y'all follow how I'm doing that? All I'm doing is grabbing those little bars, the blue bar and the red bar here, and pushing them. Okay, so it's during the day, it's really, really convenient. All right. What this ladder, like I made this entry, the way I made this entry where I showed you how I entered a long position, then I entered a limit stop on this thing to get out and exit for my profit, and I put a fixed stop underneath it at 1959 for stop. As that stands, it will not do an order cancels order. For that reason, you have to be paying attention. So if this thing were to fill my limit and exit that portion of the trade, my stop will still remain there, and I have to manually remove it, or it could potentially dip a candle and fill me on a short position. Okay? And I thought to myself, there, you know, there's got to be a way around it. I've talked to half a dozen people at Interactive Brokers, and they've all said, I'm not sure. I don't think you can do one. I finally got a hold of a guy that told me definitively, you can't do it. And he said, there's very few people that actually can ask that question, he said, because they don't know enough about the platform to realize that you cannot do it this way. Okay? You cannot go in here and, what, did y'all follow what I was saying there? What would happen here is, let's say it went to the, the 6175 and it filled me, we entered at 60, so I'd get a, a 175 you know, uh, a point, 1.75, you know, 1 point plus 0.75, three more ticks. So that would fill me, but it would not cancel out my stops that I put in. So if I wasn't paying attention, um, in the real world, it could potentially, the market maker could see that. And if they're planning on running it long, they could dip down there and they could tag that stop that I have uh, because it did not get canceled. And now all of a sudden I've got a short position on that uh, I didn't want. So... What, what you, let me show you how to get around that. I think, I think Joe is the one that wanted to know this. And I don't, I don't want to go into a whole lot of this type of stuff because there's some things I want you to figure out on your own uh, that uh, will accommodate your trading style and how you want to do things. I've got it set up the way I want it for me, okay? Now, here's how you can. Joe, were you the one, are you still in here? Are you the one that asked me how to do an order cancels order? Yes, I see you wrote that. When order cancel, order cancel. Here's the only way you can do it on this trading ladder. Go to your hotkeys and double click on it. Okay? Go to your, right at the top of your ladder, there's a button and it says hotkey details. Okay? Yes, one cancels all. I'm just going to show you how to do it right here. Alright? Go to your, your hotkeys, double click on it. It's going to open up a, um, a, a toolbox like this, okay? On the bottom right side, if you'll scroll down, you'll see one that says Alt plus left click on bid 
click on that and it'll turn blue okay then hit the configure button you with me and then hit the customize button all right in here this will answer your other question also you can play around with it see the scale fields that's where you can tell it hey I ordered it also you can play around with it see the scale fields that's where you can tell it hey I ordered entered 10 I, I bought 10 I want to dump four on the first go around and then I want to dump you know another three uh, this is uh, this is what I was saying I wanted to keep it pretty basic tonight I don't want to get real complicated but you can go into these right here these fields and tell it I originally bought this I want to unload four first I want to unload two the second time to the third time I want a trailing stop on it I want the trailing stop to move up behind it that's this is where you do all of that but keeping it pretty basic here for, for everybody else if you'll go over to the target order side here what I've done is go in here on your target order or your profit taker and in this case I put two okay that's that's an amount you can set an amount you can set a percent or you can set a number of ticks if you're trading futures and stuff. In this particular case, because I put two, it's going to recognize that in ES as two points, two full points, okay, or four ticks. So in other words, if we entered at 1960 and I put it at two in that box, it's going to recognize that as 1962, okay. What I'm doing is I'm telling it here, that's where I want my exit for profit, okay. And then go down. I'm not going to go into all this selling five of one, you know, five at first and then three and then the last two. That's what you do in the scale field. Go down to the attached stop order. And in this particular case, I've got negative two. Okay. I'm telling it negative two points, full points, eight ticks. That's where I want you to stop me out. Okay. And if you guys follow me on this, scale field selection. Um, geez, I don't know what to tell you on that one. But I'm just saying the scale fields. Um, there's a couple things I'll do those in PM with you. Um, there's like three things we have to do. Uh, we have to go back into a, a, a earlier date platform. I'll, I'll do that in PM with you. For right now, we don't need it because I don't want anybody to have to. I don't want to keep up anybody right now anyway. Yeah, you can use it for, for anything. You can use it for anything you're trading. Okay, so, so what I've told it here is on this particular one, I want um, a profit taker target of two, and I want a stop loss of negative two. Okay, now keep in mind we're only defining right now the bid side. Okay, see where we clicked on? Alt plus left plus click on the bid side. Okay, we got that. Now go to the next one down, which is Alt plus left click on the ask side. Okay, hit the configure button. Go to customize. Same thing. When we take a short position, we're telling it when it drops negative two, make that a minus two, negative two. We want to take our profit. Now, again, I said this. This is um, this is personal. This is whatever you guys want. I just use two to use two. I can actually. I got a little thicker skin than that. I can go a little deep in there. Um, but I, for for demonstration purposes, I just put that at two. Okay, so that's a negative two. And then in this particular case, because we're short, we want to attach a top. I mean, a stop as a positive two. Okay. So we, we, what we're doing is we're defining the ask side. In other words, if we were to enter a short ES position, okay, we're telling it at minus two, I want to take my profit. And at a positive two, meaning I'm that much off in the hole, I want you to stop me out. Okay, and then you hit OK, and then you hit apply, and then you hit OK. All right, now, what have I done now to it? Now I have created a scenario for this trading ladder that will allow me to do a order cancel order. And this is kind of cool. Once you set this up, you only got to do it once for this particular one. You know, if you want to do it on your stocks and you've got a $4 range or you've got a 
know, I can set it up for ticks, as you saw. You can set an amount. You can set a percentage. You can set ticks. So in this particular case, if my risk tolerance was six ticks or a point and a half, you know, I can set that. I can say, okay, you know, set my risk tolerance for, you know, a point and a half up and a point and a half down. Okay. Now we're still in this one position that we bought at 1960 and anywhere. I'm like, boy, this stuff is lame at night. I'm gonna close that position now. All right. So I hit my close position button. And that closes that out. Now, let me show you what, what I just set up, what it's going to do here now. All right, let's say we're still long. Again, I'm not looking at a chart. I'm not looking at anything. I'm just, you know, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to say we want to be long. Now all I have to do is I have to hold down, these are called hot keys. I hold down my alt key. Because if you remember right, when we set that hot key, it was alt uh, plus left click plus bid, and then we do the alt, plus right click, plus that. So I'm going to hold down my alt key, and I'm going to hit 1960, and watch what happens. Okay? 1960.25 is where I hit. Okay? Look at how it showed up now. If you'll look at my activity screen over here on the left, it says that I'm trying to buy, and it just filled me. Okay? Now, it just filled us at 1960.25. Okay? Now, if you look, it created a a bracket order is what that's called. It created us a bracket order, and it's the only way you can do an order cancels order on this ladder. However, you can do it now. So if you'll look at this, what it did is we ordered or entered at 1960.25. It automatically set us at 1962.25, which was the two points that I defined to the upside for the profit taker, and it automatically set my stop at 1958.25, which is a downside negative two point stop that I put in there. I set that up in those hot keys. And when I push that alt button on my computer and did the bid, it automatically set that stuff in there. Now, a couple things I could do. It is now a order cancels order. So if it were to go up to the top and fill me at 1962.25, the stop order will automatically go away. It will give me my profit, and the stop order will go away. If it were to drop to the stop, um, yes, I'm fixing to show you. If it were to drop to the stop and change me, take me out of the tray, then my long limit exit would, would also go away. Now, let's say we're in this at 1960, and I decide um, I, I don't want, I can do one of two things. I can cancel either one of these legs if you look right here. Like I said, I don't like to use stop. So if I wanted to, I can actually cancel that leg. I can hit the cancel button either right here on the ladder or over here in my activity panel. And I can cancel the stop. Okay? But let's say we want to leave it like this, but you want to spread it out a little bit. All I got to do is grab these things and push them. See how I just pushed the 1962.75? And if we're really moving during the day and I want to go even further, I can. But like... You know, Lloyd says during the day, and Mark says, you got to have a little bit looser stops. you got to be a little bit looser with these stops or you're going to get smacked out of these trades all the time. So, you know, once I put the thing on, and I know it automatically enters me with a two-point uh, limit and a two-point stop, I can adjust from there. Like, I can pull this stop down a little bit. I can pull it down another point and a half. So now I've opened this trade up, and as you'll see on the activity panel over here, as I'm moving them around, it's changing those numbers. Okay. So let's say it's going like mad and, and, and I'm heading right and it's, and it's coming up my direction. You know, I, can, I can do a loose center real quick with that. Um, I can push away from it and then I can push my stop up further. You know, I can push that stop up there as I'm going. Okay, and say it's still going right. Trade's still going right. Candles still look good. Chart still looks good. You know, I'm pushing and pushing. And, you know, I'm basically you know, following right behind it. You know, and you can do it that quickly, that instantly. Okay, and then let's say you're looking at your chart and you're saying, okay, I think this thing may have hit a, a resistance that it's not going to break. Um, pull your stop back a little bit. Say, I don't want to be stopped up quite that quick to where they drop a wick. Because in futures trading, they will dip a wick. And you guys that have traded them know they'll throw down a big old wick and knock that stop out of there. And then all of a sudden, you're, you're jacked on the trade. So, you know, first thing I'll do is pull it away a little bit. I'll say, okay, we're at resistance. Um, say the resistance is 1963. And I'm saying, okay, it's at resistance. It tapped it twice, tapped it three times. It doesn't want to go it, so I'm going to drag down to 1963. But I can say, you know, based on the chart, my 1964 is just a little unrealistic. I, I, 
six times better and then zone is x y is and then this time it's better. Alright, so now now we got resistance at 1963, say you got two or three ticks on it, and it's just not it's not gonna break through and you're watching your charts and you see it's not gonna get it. So it's because it's going to fail here, I'm going to pull the 1962.75 so the next time it wicks to 1963, if it's going to fail again, it will fill me in this particular case at 1962.75, I'll be pissed. It's going to fill my order and it will be an order cancels order. This particular order, once uh, it fills, will cancel the stop cap. Alright. That makes sense? To Daryl, Paul, Joe, the guys that were asking about that, that's how you do a order cancels order in the Thinkorswim. I mean, not Thinkorswim, in the Interactive Brokers Trading Ladder. Again, double click the hotkey. Go in here to your hotkeys. If you remember right, I set my see where it says Alt plus left. Click on the bid side. Click on it. The configure. Go in here. All this is telling you what you're doing. You're setting the bid size. You're using an alt left click. Go to customize. Um, I can change that from a two two point to a percent. When I'm trading futures, I'm not going to set my stops and limit that percentage. You know, I'm not going to say, hey, one percent knock me out. You know, it's going to either be an amount, a fixed point amount, or it's going to be a ticks. In this particular case, I left it as an amount. If you've got a little bit thicker skin, you may say, hey, I I want three. I want three three points. You know, I can I can tolerate three points. I mean, I, I want to make three points, but I can tolerate three also. You know, I can go down here and I can change that to three. It, uh, well, make sure, by the way, that you transmit the orders instantaneously. Just click the print. There you go. You want you don't want it to. If you if you're trying to play this thing this quickly, you don't want it to ask for confirmation. Hit OK. And now you you've set your bid side. Okay. You still got to set the ask side if you're going to do the same. Uh, limitations uh, when you're shorting the thing. Okay, so click on Alt, left click on Ask, configure, go over to customize. I'm going to change my stuff uh, on a short to three bucks. I can take a three. I want to take a three dollar profit. I can take a that's a negative three by the way. And I can take a, I want to take a three dollar and change that two to see if I can get it. Three, that's going to be my stop loss. I've got three three points on it. Hit OK. Hit Apply. And hit OK. And we're still in that other trade. So I'm going to kill that trade real quick. So we're looking for us at 1965. We're going anywhere. Jeez. It's hard to, hard to demonstrate how cool this stuff is at night when you got stuff that moves at a snail pace. During the day when the stuff's really moving, it's actually really cool. It's fun to use. All right, so I got, I'm going to close that position because it's not doing anything anyway. Um, all right, so let's go for, let's stay with long. I want to just demonstrate how this one's going to work now. We're going to push the Alt key, and we're going to try to enter our bid right here at 59.75. And now you'll see that um, we haven't filled yet because it would show up in the activity pane here. You'll see we're trying to fill it 1959.75. Let's say, hey, we're, we're just, we want to be long. We're going to push. We go to 1960 and it fills. Okay, so we got filled at 1960 and we, um, well, I didn't change the original. So we've got 275 um, above that where it's got the, uh, the exit on the trade and it's got 275 below that. My original, when I pushed it, it didn't change the, the other thing. Where I adjusted that to three points up and three points down. So I guess I guess I probably would have needed to exit the trade entirely, which I'm gonna try and re-enter. Yes, I would have had to exit that completely and then retry to enter in. Uh, hit my Alt key. I'm gonna take the 59.75, should fill us, and it did. So now now it did. I had to exit that last trade by pushing it. It didn't give me the full three that I needed on both sides of it. So in this particular case, I got my 1959.75 uh, fill, and it's it's automatically now set because I went into my hotkeys and adjusted that to three points, so it was three bucks. And it's automatically set for my profit taking at 1962.75. It's automatically set for my stop at 1956.75. Okay. Again, during the day, if it's moving along, you can slide these things real quickly. 
things like that. We say, stop, I pull away. Starts coming toward me, I pull away. Keep in mind, trade your plan, okay? Make your plan. Plan your trade and trade your plan. The last thing you want to do is mentally tell yourself, okay, my, my, um, my stops, uh, my mental stop is and physical stop is set for three. Honor that. Don't, don't, don't go against that, okay? So the last thing you want to do is get yourself into a trade and, and tell yourself, you know, my, my, my thought process is I'm okay. I won't lose any sleep. I won't do anything. You know, I would, wouldn't do any different in life if I lose three points on the ES trading it. And so that's why I set three points in the, in the, in the hot key. Remind yourself that so that when you're out here in the live world and you're trading, um, the last thing you want to do is, is skew those numbers and say, I, I know I'm right on this, and start pulling this stop away further than your three points because now you're, you've turned a, a structured trade that you were good with and you can live with and you understand into a trade that now becomes emotional for you. Now all of a sudden you're emotionally attached to this. You're going, oh gosh, if I, I, I got to pull that stop away. I got to be right on this thing because now it's getting me for more than what I want. So never pull yourself away from the more than what you set in the hot keys, three or two or one is your risk tolerance, stay with that. Stay within those bounds. Don't pull this thing further out. I see so many people that, that say, geez, man, I, I, you know, and I got some people that I, I teach how to trade futures, and uh, they, they tell me, is it human nature to pull your, your limit out uh, closer and pull your stop away further? And I said, yeah, if you're not a disciplined trader and you trade on emotion, it is, okay? If you trade like a robot, you don't do those things, okay? You, 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 you don't allow yourself to only make one tick of profit, or I mean one point of profit, but then allow yourself to lose three points in, in, in a stop. That, that, that's not good trading. I mean, you're going you're gonna to ultimately end up the loser all the, all the time on that end. If, if mentally you trade your, your plan as you, because it becomes so simple to do here, don't slide these things around. Right. That's exactly. That's how a stop order can protect you from yourself. So in your hotkeys, if, if, you're, if you're stopping your limit, you can always play around the limit. You know, you just adjust it up, adjust it down. As long as you're making money, you're making money. It's the stop one that you have to be concerned with. That's the one that messes you up mentally, messes you up on your risk tolerance, messes you up emotionally, and gets you all involved and attached to trades and, and, and messes with your head. Okay? Don't do it. If you're setting that thing for three, don't ever pull this thing down below three. Never. Okay? And, and I talk, well, let me see if I mistake. I think I quit clicking this thing and didn't get it out. Um, you know, I, I talk to so many guys that trade futures, and they're all, all the time they're saying, man, um, you know, I, I talk to so many guys that trade futures, and they're all, all the time they're saying, man, it, it's just it's killing me that I want to be right so often. They say, you know, I'll, I'll enter a trade. I'm gonna go ahead and enter one real quick again, just so we're in. You know, they'll say, okay, we got in at 19:59.20. They'll say I'll enter a trade and 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 then I'll drag my limit to exit down to a point away. You know, we're you know originally we were three points out for profit, and they'll say, well, then it starts going against me, and it's just my nature to pull that stop down. Uh, and I tell them, why would you want to allow yourself to lose more money than ultimately you want to try to win? That's just poor trade. You know, if if you're only going to try to to win one point, well, then don't allow yourself to lose more than one point. You know, if you if your goal is is you know three, and and, and it's just not going to make it to the three, uh, and you want to take two, that's one thing. You know, it's one thing to take your two for profits, but don't pull your stop out to four start getting wrong. Don't pull that thing down to four because now you're telling yourself, okay, a minute ago I was going to take one full point for profit. Now I'm willing to take two points for profit. But now that the trade's going against me, all of a sudden I'm willing to take four points for a loss. Don't do it. Do not do it. This this ladder, when you set it up right with this order canceled order stuff and, and it allows you to slide things around so quickly and so defenselessly, um, it, 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 it messes with your head. You got to be you got to be really disciplined. Okay, because you're gonna catch you're gonna catch yourself pushing stuff around real quickly because it's human nature to want to be right. You want to be right on your trade. Well, at the expense of, of you know at losing real money, 
forget about your ego and forget about being right. Okay? If you're wrong, don't you know tell yourself, well, the market humbled me, I was wrong, just take your loss. Don't let the loss compound into something bigger. Because if you start trading like that, ultimately you're gonna be done and then you're gonna be out of the room. So, you know, it's one of the things I try to really stress and when once I show people how to use this setup, it becomes so simple and so convenient and so it's tempting. You know, it's real tempting because it, it just makes things so easy for you. You know, that you start to slip away from your discipline a little bit. You know, you're saying, Oh gosh, you know, I think I think I got this. Yes, let me show a stock. Apple. This one, for some reason, and when I click on an apple, if I go over to my watch list, okay, if I go over to my watch, my favorites over here on the left side, and I click on apple, for some reason, when they're not alive and, and running, like at night like this, it doesn't automatically fill it into all my content. So I've got to go up to my order box here and click on apple, and then you'll see it trades it. Okay, I mean changes it. All right. So now apple, now apple is showing here. Okay. Uh, Apple trading at 115.39. So in this case, I can go to the top here. Um, same thing. I've, on this particular one, I probably would set hot keys for it a little further out than two bucks. Uh, I'd probably set them about four bucks or something. Just so that I, what I don't want, you know, four bucks is probably two bucks is probably too big. Um, but what you don't want is you don't want to set your stuff up so that when you set your entry to to get into the trade that the minute you're in, it instantly hits one of your other ones, you know, un, you know, preferably it hits your stop, but you don't want, I mean, your your limit, but you don't want it to hit your stop so darn quick, you don't have time to adjust anything. So if you're an Apple trader and, and you know what that, you know, the, the average two range is in, in, in an hour or 15 minute trade on a chart, you can say, okay, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm safe at a buck here, I'm safe at two bucks. You know, so set your hot keys up so that you, when you enter this thing, um, in this particular case, I'm going to leave mine alone, I'm going to put Hit my alt key, hit an entry. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So what I did here is I, I hit my alt key for my hot key, and I told it um, I got a hundred contract. I mean a hundred shares up here at the top of my ladder. You can change that to whatever you want. Um, I could go over to my activity pane here. I can adjust those all for this. So what I've told it here is it is uh, fill me at 115.39. If Apple was actually trading, which it's not, but it was, and it filled me. Then um, these other two variables variables would kick in. You know, it would show my profit taker at 118.39, and it would show my stop loss at 112.39, three bucks below it. So we got we got a profit taker at three bucks above, and a, and a stop loss at three bucks below. So now they decide, say you decide, um, I don't I don't want to have that much. I don't want to have that much uh, stop loss on this. I can click on that quantity. I can change that. I'm supposed to be able to change it. But I, you can go in there and change it. Let's see. You notice you can use any options, Fed trades. Yes. I'm going to show you that also. I'm going to show you that next. Okay. So um, you can change these variables. Um, if you want to change the on your activity thing here, you can uh, activity window. You can change the, the stop to where it doesn't have to be. Where it doesn't have to be three bucks. I may decide I don't want to let let that thing get me for three bucks. You know, so I may change that to, to one twelve fifty or one twelve seventy five or one thirteen or whatever. Whatever you want to change it to. So you go in here and you change it and, and now you know one twelve eighty eight. Hit update. And now all of a sudden you've told this thing, okay, if I do fill at one fifteen thirty nine, here's my fill line right here. If I do fill there, um, you know, I got my limit set at 118.39 to exit the trade, and I've got my stop set at 112.88. Now I move that up a little bit, and you know, and, and then throughout the day, you, you know, say you get filled, say you get filled on the order. Okay, throughout the day, you may decide, eh, I don't want, I, I don't still don't feel good about losing two and a half bucks. You know, so you can go in here and adjust that again. So this this would allow me to actually enter Apple stock if I wanted to do that. Okay, now before I go to the next level, has anybody got any questions on any of this stuff so far? I mean, everybody good? Y'all on track here? I showed JD. I showed you where to go into the hotkeys and set your 
exits uh, on like 10 contracts where you can exit three and then four and then two. So you can do all that. You can figure all that out. It's, it's a little beyond what I want to go with where uh, to tonight. Let's cancel this. All right. Let me show you the next the next level of trading with this platform. All right. Let's take. Um, you want to stick with Apple? We good with Apple? Let's stay with Apple. All right. Let's say. I know you guys, I know Lloyd, I, I myself, and, and some of the guys in there, and a lot of you guys like to do um, credit spreads, okay? You like to, you like to do, what is it, trading days, trading days, oh, there it is, I got my, oh, I'm going to have to fix that real quick. I was looking for the edge of the thing, I was like, what the heck did the scrolling bar go? It got moved out, so I'm going to unlock my platform, I'm going to move that scrolling bar over. Relock my platform. I was looking for this scrolling bar right here, by the way. All right, so where, where did Apple end up here? Where are we at on Apple? Okay, Apple, A P P L. Okay, Apple. We ended one fifteen twenty one. Let's say you decide you want to do a what's called a vertical bear call spread. Okay. That's a bearish play. It's a credit spread, and you're going to collect the credit. Let's say you decide, and you look at your charts, and you looked at your technical indicator, and you looked at everything, and you just decide there is no way Apple can make it to 116 this week. Okay, so we go down to our options chain here, and we scroll up, and we find the 116. Now, let's 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 say sometimes this thing gets delayed. I'm not sure why. I don't know what it's thinking. Click on the 116. Did I do it or not? Let's, let's add some other strikes in there. Okay. Let's go to the next one. How about that? Okay. I'm locking this one in. Let's just change this. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Okay. All right. Here's what I'm going to do. Let's go to, let's, let's say, next week's expiration. If you notice, I scrolled down. Okay, September 25th is this week's. October 2nd is next week's. Let's say you decide there's no way Apple can go above 116. I just, you know, I'm not telling you this. I'm saying let's say you decide that based on all your charts, your indicators, everything you looked at, you decided the market's going to crash, it's going to burn for whatever reason. Um, I want to do a bearish call credit spread. So what I did is I took that 116. All I did here was I take the 116 down in this window, see it, and I drag it up into my box where it says option change adding legs. So right now, just drag it up as a call, okay? Now, as a this is a whole different class, so I'm not going to get carried away here. As a credit spread, you would want to sell this 116 and buy the 117, okay? So I moved it in there. I did was take the 116, slide it up, take the 117, slide it up. In this particular case, we want to change that to sell. See the 116 call, see where it says next week's expiration, October 2nd, 116 call. There's the delta, there's a good ask. Um, I want to go to this action box and change it from a buy to a sell. And now that I've told it, I want to sell the 116. And I want to buy the 117 next week's expiration. It realizes already it's a bear call spread, and it tells you that. Okay. Say you're a two contract trader. Say you're a five contract trader. Whatever you are, doesn't matter to me. If you decide you want to do five contracts, go into quantity, hit five. Okay. Go into limit price. You can look at the over here on the bid and the ask. And you can see that it's uh, 48 and 43. The midpoint on that would be about 45. So what we can do is we can go in here and if you'll let me scroll it, I don't know how to roll a ball in this now. I'm going to put in minus 45. And it's going to realize that as a credit. We're trying to sell a credit spread. So I'm going to tell it, well, $49. Okay, minus. Come on. Okay. Minus 
Mm -hmm. I've told it uh, 45 cent is the credit, okay? Uh, the 43 is the bid side, 48 is up on the ask side, 45 somewhere in the middle. Um, so I'm telling you, okay, I want a bear call spread, a 116, I want to sell on the call side, 117, I want to buy. Um, my maximum risk on that trade is $1. I said that's another class. But the max risk is the difference between the two strikes. In the event that Apple were to close above the 117 strike, um, you would realize the maximum loss on this trade, which would be $1. Okay. What are we getting for that? Well, we're getting paid 45 cents credit. Okay. So whether you're doing one contract or five contracts or 10, well, you're getting 45 cents credit. Okay. So the maximum that you can lose on that trade is 55 cents because the max loss on the trade is $1, the difference between the two strikes. So if you enter this bear call spread and you say I want to enter it for a day trade and I'm going to hit submit order, 14, throw it up here. Okay, see what threw it in my activity thing. So here's what it says now. It says you want to buy five contracts you want a 45 cent credit and you wanted to buy this spread it's a negative 45 because it's a credit okay it's it's uh, selling the 116 call buying the 117 call okay now let's say we, we got two things that we need to do let's say you decide okay I'm not getting full, filled at 45 I'm gonna drop a 43 hit update just like that I change it okay now here's the cool part if I just click on it it's not trading live right now, but if it was the market was open and it was trading live, this particular bear call spread will actually show up on the ladder up here. Okay? And it will show the 43, it will show the 48, or whatever that was. The 43 will be on down here, the 48 will be up here, and the 45 will be right in the middle. Okay? So what you can then do, I can't do it now because it's not live trading but what it would allow me to do is if it were showing up with the 43 down here and the 48 here say I, I, I move uh, what I, I could do just like I do on the other one okay I can actually grab that thing and slide it around it's not live trading right now because it's not going to allow me to do it but say say we were in there for four let's say we put our original 45 okay and not not filled it even though that's the bid at that particular time 43 on the bid side, 48 on the ask side. Um, 45 is the midpoint of that particular bear call spread. Um, say it won't fill you at 45. You can grab it. Uh, it'll show up on your ladder here. You can grab that thing just like I did before and drag it down. So in other words, you would, if it was trading live right now, I could pull that from a 45 credit to a 44, and it may fill me. If I'm a, if I'm a peony under underneath the midpoint. Chances are it may fill me. If it still won't fill me there, I can drag it down one more time. Drag it down to 43. And it's, it's more than likely going to fill me. So any type of, of trade like this um, that I make, I can um, I can drag on the same ladder. So if, once, once I get this type of trade, whether it's a, a vertical uh, bull call spread, a bear call spread, a bull put spread, um, a calendar spread, all that stuff. Trading window. Once it shows up in here and you click on it, it transfers itself over to the ladder. So it allows you to do the same thing. Flip and slide around. All right. Can you put a stop on it based on the underlying app stop? Um, I'm sure you can. I don't do it that way. Uh, you're asking, uh, can I put a stop on it uh, based on Apple dropping to or going up to 116.50? Is what you're asking. So you're saying, how do I tell it that if Apple goes to 116.50, can you stop me out? That's going to be over here. Again, I'm not going to go there, but when you get over here, click on sell on the top order portion. And it, it's if I was actually in this, it would know the position. It's showing me the last one I used, which was five. If I was actually in this, it would say uh, position. It would actually tell me it would know my position. And I would quit, click position and Day. And then if you go into the advanced here, um, this is where you can uh, attach different types of stops. Uh, 
price of the apple. Yeah, you can you can attach. Um, you can. There's a couple different type stops here. Like in this particular box, you see where uh, it's got a limit and a market and a stop and a stop limit and a trail. You know, I can I can set that. I can set a stop on it. Set my stop price and just tell it where I want it to stop it. Okay. Or I can put it. I can actually put a trail and a stop on it. Um, you do all that from up here in this window, the order window. You, you preset yourself. Again, I don't want to get too carried away into it, but go into this advanced box here and um, see what it says. Um, one order cancels another and hedge and attach stop loss profit taker bracket. That's where you're going to go in here and, and mess around with. Um, if you want to do set it up as a, a stop based on the option prices or if you want to set it up as a stop based on what Apple's actually trading at. You can do both. All right, let me train that back to the stop. Okay, um, you guys want to pick another kind of option trade? Let me cancel that one. These aren't going to show up because they're because the market's not open. Any of these options? Cancel that one. These aren't going to show up because they're because the market's not open. Any of these option trades that we set up, they aren't going to show up. Um, we can do the opposite of that. Say you decide you want to do weak. Say you. Say you're just really bullish on Apple. You say, oh, that Apple's going Apple's going to be a 118 this week. Say that that's what you're saying. Um, so you decide, hey, I'm going to do a, a full call spread, 116, 117. You know, I'm going to sell the I'm going to sell the uh, the 117. As my insurance, you know, and boom, it picks it right up. So you say you're, let's say you're real bullish on Apple, and you want to do this week's expiration, and, and you say, hey, I, I, I really think it's going to be above 118, so I'm going to do a bull call spread of a 116, uh, 116, then I'm going to buy the call, and I'm going to sell the 117 call. So it's a vertical bull call spread this time. It's the opposite of what your credit spread was this time. You actually want it to be above 117 to win. Go in there and choose, uh, you know, how many. Uh, last used, it said it was five. Going here, uh, we can look at the bid and ask. It shows up 34, 39. Midpoint would be about 36. So we can go in here to our limit price and click on 36. I don't have a roller ball on this mouse. It's a little tricky with this platform. I do it in my office all the time. But this is one of those kind that you can run your finger across, but it doesn't seem to be real friendly with this platform. Okay, so now we're looking at 36 cent debit. <coughs> You go in here, say you're a 10 contract player. I set 10 contracts. Uh, I'm going to pay that 36 would be the midpoint. Um, we want to do it on a day. Uh, it's going to be a debit spread. You're going to pay to put this spread on because it's a it's a vertical bull call spread. All right, good. Did I answer all the stuff that you needed? Paul? I'm going to wrap it up after this anyway. Did you get everything answered that you needed? Yeah, because I'm going to wrap it up here shortly anyway. It's, it's been an hour and a half. <clears throat> okay, so the bull call spread, 36 cent debit. Um, day for the day, not good till cancel, just, just for the day. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, hit submit, and it's going to jump up into our activity box. Okay? Now it's up there. And again, now it sits. Okay? Let's say 36 was the mid or close to the mid, but it doesn't want to fill you. Okay? All you gotta do, again, if the market was open, all I've got to do is click on that thing, the top line of where it says Apple. Yeah, see, <laughs> it doesn't like that I'm making all these little trades in my simulator because it's probably thinking I'm nuts. And it's probably thinking, boy, we need to make sure this guy stays on a simulator. So I'm trying to enter all these trades when the market's closed, and even the simulator detects that, that you're you know, goofing around and doing stupid stuff. <clears throat> but either way, I could click on this Apple. Full call spread uh, when the market's open, and it will show up on the ladder. Okay, and if it's if it's at 34 and 38, and 36 doesn't fill me, uh, you know, it's a debit spread. Are you willing to spend 37 cents? So I can grab the little line, push it up to 37 cents on the ladder. Boom, it'll probably fill it. Now I'm in it at 37 cents. <clears throat> now on the bull call spread, if it gets above the 117, I win. Okay, max I can win on that one would be a dollar. I paid 30, say I get in at 36 cents. I paid 36 cents for that dollar max 
win. Uh, so I got a 64 cents uh, profit on that one if Apple closes above 117. Now, you have to close that trade because now you have two stocks that are in the money. All right? With interactive broker, and I'm not going to say this is for everyone because I don't know how they treat you based on your account size. With my account size, I do not have to close those even if they're in the money. They will wash that for me. They'll give me the max profit. Um, the, the commissions are dirt cheap. Um, you know, if I did five contracts, it'd be less than three dollars of commission. Uh, they, they'd wash the trade for me. You know, they'd wash the short and the long legs, and I'd get the max gain on. Um, with the with the bear call spread that we put on the other one, which was um, wanting it to stay below there. Um, both those strikes would stay out of the money, so there was nothing to close. So that one would also just close worthless. Okay, so uh, I don't know if you have to test it or if you got to call Interactive Brokers and see if they'll wash it for you. Um, I don't know. Call them up and ask them. Say, hey, if I get an in the money trade and it stays in the money, will you wash the short leg and with the with the long leg? They either tell you yes or no, or you can test it. And let one close in the money, and see what they do. I, I know they wash them for me, so that's kind of a, a touch and go thing. You may want to call them, ask them. But you know, in my in my case, I can leave one in the money, let it close, and they'll wash it, which is kind of nice. All right. So, uh, yes. Go into your. I don't know if my account management. Let's see. Go into your account management. <clears throat> okay, there'd be a tab. Um, okay, you can go to, uh, from here you can get to it. Um, go into your uh, top left on account. It's not going to send me to an account management home here because I'm in a simulator. Okay, but click on the top on the account and then click go down to account management home and it's going to open up uh, a brand new page for you. Okay, that brand new page is going to be your account manager. All right. On that account manager, go to the uh, let's see, reports. Reports. Now, mine's already signed me out. I'd have to sign back in. I, I opened it up in case I got these kind of questions, and that was all of them. So, if you're going to your account management, <clears throat> you can go into um, trade. Uh, we're going to reports. Go into activity. activity. Either activity or trade confirmations. Uh, trade confirmations and reports. Mine's not going to let me open them because I've already expired. And then once it goes into that, if you've got multiple accounts, an IRA and a regular account, select the account that you want to know what it is. And then it's going to generate, uh, populate a page for you. Okay. On that page, it's going to let you select dates. You can either select today's date. <coughs> Or a series of dates. You know, you can pick the last week, or you can pick the last three days. But once you click click that, it'll generate a, uh, a page for you that'll be kind of like your profit and loss page. It'll show what trades you open, what trades you close, and it will show the commission amount um, for all of those those trades that you had to enter and to exit. You can also go in there and go to Go into, um, I think I'm, let me read your next question. I think I'm picking on it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. On that one, um, if you go into account manager and go into settings and go into fees, okay, that's going to be a personal thing for you guys. It's good. That's going to be, you're going to have to call interactive brokers because I don't know what you want to trade. Um, all this information you're seeing on my ladder is what's called streaming data. All that data is streamed, and all that data you're paying for, but it's cheap, okay? Um, if you call them, go into the fees, there's some boxes that you're going to have to check in there, and they're going to ask you, what do you want to trade? Do you want to trade Forex? Do you want to trade options? Do you want to trade global Forex? Do you want to trade, you know, future options? You know, they're going to ask you all these things. you got to decide what what you want to trade 
and 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 tell them, okay, I mean, you can make it as simple as tell them, hey, I want to trade futures. You know, I primarily want to trade the ES and I want to trade CL. There'll be a fee associated with both. Um, and you can tell them I want to trade options and I want to trade stocks. And they will tell you what boxes to check in the fees so that you can get the correct data streaming to this dome, this ladder. Okay, because that what what you pay for is what actually streams the data to your ladder. Okay, I've got probably more than you guys would need because I trade a lot of stuff than you guys do. Uh, but ask them. Say, here's what I want to trade. They'll tell you which box. There's a, there's a U.S. bundle. You know, it's kind of inclusive on some stuff, some option stuff. But, you know, if you want to do some little bit deeper stuff, you're gonna have to click some more stuff. And the in the the average charge is I, I believe it's like six bucks to ten bucks a month. Um, for the streaming data on the different stuff, and um, if you trade over 30 bucks in commissions, they waive it, and it'll say waivable next to it. So, like on the U.S. bundle, if if, if it's six bucks to get, you know, option stuff. All right. Let's see. That's, yeah, that's personal. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hang it up. I think I've covered everything from the basic level. I mean, I showed you guys how to get into the more complex stuff without getting into it. Yo, hang on one second. I'm going to go grab a drink of water. I'll be back. All right, so that's that's pretty much it for me. Um, I am glad that um, Lloyd actually recorded it because it, it actually went a little longer than I thought it was going to. And while you know, I appreciate everybody being here, there may have only been a handful of you guys that, that benefited from it. I think going forward, there's going to be more people that get signed up with Interactive Broker. And based on the fact that it was an hour and 48 minutes long, I probably don't want to sit down and go through this too many more times. So I'm glad it's recorded. I'm going to stop the recording. Um, well, actually, I may let Lloyd do that because he's got something he does with those once he stops them. He, he um, indexes them somehow. So I'm going to kill the screen sharing. And, uh, yeah, you guys are welcome. I appreciate you hanging out. And I think you'll really enjoy the platform. It's, it's as good as it gets. Customer service, a little lackluster. I told them that today. I said, hey, you know, I'm getting a few complaints on the customer service. You know, we call you guys and you sit on hold forever. You know, what's up with that? How can we fix that? So if I'm going to refer you guys in my options room, I, I said, you know, that, that's got to increase. He said, oh, we're working on hiring some more people. That's well, you need to. That's because that's the complaint I'm getting is people don't like sitting on hold that long. <laughs> All right, so everybody have a good night. I'm going to close the mic, close the desktop share.